Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with my very special guest, Nick Vale. Nick, great to see you again. Happy to be here, Okay, as always. This is episode number 196. We've been at this since 2011, and we're making progress. We're explaining to the world why no one has a free will and why this matter is supremely important. The title of today's show is Being Rich, Free Will, and the 2016 Presidential Election. Now, the theme is basically that a lot of people say that, like, of my free will, I went out and I made a lot of money, and, you know, that's, you know, I'm entitled to, I mean, it's an entitlement is a different issue, but basically, like, of my free will, I became rich, and then there, is a lot of, there are a lot of people, for example, that haven't become rich, and they're to blame for it, that, like, you know, perhaps we shouldn't even help them because, you know, of their free will, they chose to be poor. We're here to, to, to explain how nobody chooses ever of their free will to be either rich or poor, and how, most importantly, in these, this 2016 presidential election, there is a huge income disparity in this country. You have, like, a very minuscule per percentage of the population that's extraordinarily rich, like Donald Trump, who's worth over $10 billion, okay? And the rich, you know, unfortunately, are using this free will myth to indict and blame and accuse the poor for being poor and using that as an excuse for not helping the poor. And w uh, the theme of this show is the, po the politicians, our, our candidates for the 2016 election, have a duty, a responsibility to defend the, the rights of all Americans. And so this issue of free will should be in the 2016 and then in the 2020 presidential elections as a way of overcoming this income-based you know, discrimination based on this, this falsehood of free will. Now, before we get into this, as we do in every show, we're going to first define what people mean when they say we have a free will and then explain why the notion of free will is completely mistaken, completely false. Nick starts off. Okay, so what's the question now? Okay, so what, what, when people say that we have a free will, when a person says, like, ah. I, I made all this money of my free will, what are they saying? People who believe in free will erroneously and mistakenly and, uh, you know, they believe that of their own free will, they could, you know, they believe that people could do otherwise. So they believe they deserve credit because, you know, there were many multiple scenarios of what their future could have been. And based on their own free will, they were, you know, using their own being to be the first cause and the originator of what they did. And people who don't, and therefore, we are all morally... Uh, responsible for our actions because after all we could have done otherwise people who don't believe in free will like George and myself know deep down that people could not have done otherwise and therefore it's easy to conclude nobody is to blame and no one is to be praised or credited for what happens in their life and nobody's ultimately truly and deeply morally responsible for their lives excellent or another way to frame this is actually relative to our, our theme tonight for example Donald Trump admits he acknowledges that Yes, he's like, you know, he's had advantages. He acknowledges that he's been very lucky in life. You know, that he acknowledges that his riches, his $10 billion, isn't really because of, you know, because of his, you know, independent efforts, independent of his upbringing, of the opportunity he's been afforded. He acknowledges this, right? So, like, basically people who believe in free will say, well, you know, I became free will I, I became rich. <laughs> I became free I became, rich. We've been doing this for too long. <laughs> I became free rich. Right. I became rich um, not because of, you know, the parents that I was born um, to, not because of the country where I was raised and the, and the educational opportunities that I had and the natural abilities that weren't in my control. I became rich because of my free will. And so, like, you know, that is the definition, excuse me, definition of free will. We have been doing this for too long. And so, like, basically, Donald Trump himself acknowledges that when you look at his words, um, you know, carefully, that he does not have a free will, yet he and the Democratic candidates refuse to tell the people to talk about this, you know, especially um, 
you know, as a way of, of lessening this discrimination, this, this uh, income power um, inequality. Yeah, but I need to disagree with you because there's a lot of double talk, especially in the Republican side. So Donald Trump might say, I'm very lucky. It's either, you know, it's, it's either all up to God or mostly up to God that I acquired such wealth. But if I, I can guarantee you, if I sat him down and said, Donald, do you believe in free will? He would say, yes, of course. Stop being ridiculous. You're saying his language connotes a, it wasn't up to me, I'm lucky, it was God or whatever. But if, I keep telling you this, and I want the camera to understand this. If you say, do you believe, if, I don't know what's so hard about I, I those six words. Do, can't you just say, Donald, do you believe in free will? What do you think he's going to say? He's going to say, of yes. Of course, and stop you, being ridiculous. And you know what? But all his language implies that it wasn't up to him, it's lucky. But he doesn't want to be robbed of his, all his accomplishments. And you know Rape why, you know why he would say that we have free will? Because even though, word it that way. even though we have a separation of church and state here in the United States, our politicians are afraid of the church. Our politicians are afraid that if they came out with the scientific, logical, empirical truth that no one has a free will, the, 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 the pope and bishops would, 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 you know, would, would, would object. So and not only them, a lot of people believe in free will, and it's an inconvenient truth that we don't have it. So some of these politicians don't have the, the courage, the, the, the character, to present the, the American people with the truth, especially when it's in their benefit to know this truth. I just want to highlight again the words that you're using, the vernacular. Everybody flip-flops and contradicts, contradicts themselves and is a hypocrite and flip-flops with this free will issue. They, when you speak with them, even Joel Osteen or anybody will say, you know, it's a, God has a plan for me. I can't, th you know, I'm very lucky. They, they sound very humble and everything. But when, if you just would say, do you believe in free will, just stop with everything else. They're going to say, yes, of course I do. Those are the six magic words. Right, and, and like... So Donald could say, or Bernie Sanders, or Hillary Clinton, everybody can say, well, you know, it's not up to me, it's God. Just say, do you believe in free will and see what happens. Right, I mean, now today they may say... They'll say, of course, you stop being today ridiculous. Today they may say, of course, we have a free will, but in... Um, well, in, if it's up to us, In six months, they, not, they may not be saying that. In, in four yeah, but years... it opens up a whole can of worms. Years, in four years, they may be saying, of course we don't have a free will. And that's why we're using Right, then why knowledge. should anybody get paid more than me? It would right. be the next question. We'll address that. But like, yeah, before well, we go into that... A, before, no, that's an important point. Because that's why are, they don't want to admit people it. People are afraid, yes. And we, that's an important point. But well, before we go into that, we're going to explain... In other words, like our last episode, we were explaining how like being overweight is not only an important issue because like to the extent people believe people have a free will, people will blame the overweight for being overweight. Yeah. Well, with this, with this issue of, of being rich, who of their free will chooses to, free, to be rich? In other words, like if everyone has a free will, wouldn't everyone choose to be rich? Wouldn't everyone choose- Didn't you mean choose... who of their free will would choose to be poor? Well, both. Every, everyone of their free will oh, oh, would choose to be right, rich. You're right, sorry, you're <laughs> excellent. Who, who, who of their free will wouldn't choose to be rich? Exactly, who of, who of their free will wouldn't choose to, to do the work, to gain the knowledge, to gain the opportunities Wait, 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 some people watching this can say, I have free will, and it's, you know, we did, this just came out the last, uh, you know, debate. Those are New York values to be rich. You know, the guy who won the lottery in Tennessee says he has no desire to be rich. He's giving half of it away to this church. And so a lot of people can argue with you and say, I have free will and I choose not to be rich. It's not a value of mine. Are I our believe. values are up to us. Do we, do we, do, no, uh, do we choose? No, but let's not just harp on. Do we there are people choose who, our values? who are multimillionaires who give it all away, like Christopher McCandless. And, you know, in, into the wild, he gave up all of... And know, do they do that of their free will? No, but I'm saying there are people who believe in free will who don't want to be rich. They want to become monks and okay. be reclusive. Now, you, you bring up a very so important point. So let's not just point. stick with that. But you I know bring up a very who of your own free will would want to be impoverished. Exactly, exactly. In other words, who chooses... Or depressed or overweight or, yeah, all these right. other things. Yeah. Exactly. All right, now, you brought up a very important point. Again, we want to keep this tied to the politicians. So, like, a lot of people fear that as our world evolves beyond this very harmful belief in free will <clears throat> that certain individuals who contribute more to society will not be rewarded, compensated for this additional uh, uh, contribution. Explain to the, the, the audience how this is a mistaken belief in, in the implications of our world overcoming the belief in free will. Okay, so if I had a free will, I would have understood that. Well, say that again, uh, what the question is. All right, I'll, I, no, I, I, I'll I better than that, I'll explain it. Here's the thing. All right, the idea is... Well, just like, ask me again, people, so I get it. All right, people are afraid that if we um, 
abandon the belief in free will, now there will be no rationale, for example, paying a doctor more than one pays a cashier. Oh, okay. Well, my personal opinion, that is a big problem. Once we all acknowledge there's no free will, which hopefully will happen sooner rather than later, the big fear is that, you know, we're all going to demand to get paid the same, which won't work because, how, okay, in theory, without free will, we should all be paid the same. Yes and in no. In theory. Yes and no. But embed, in my theory, embedded in the laws of the universe are the laws of supply and demand. And economic laws are like gravity or like electromagnetic or whatever other, you know, laws of nature exist that I can't think of. So you need... Free will is an illusion, but actions and consequences are not illusions. So you do need carrots and sticks, rewards and punishments to motivate and slightly demotivate and reward and punish behavior that we feel is good for... Forget about morality, because without free will, there's no ultimate morality, but quote-unquote morality, you need people to not be killing people in the streets, not be stealing. You need to protect people... And, and you need to not, not put them in jail for punishment, you know, more for rehabilitation, but really more for deterrence and protection, quarantine. You know, if someone has a bad flu, you're not going to blame them. If they have some horrible disease, you have to quarantine them. So I believe that the income inequality, which is huge, should be under no free will much smaller. But I do believe that other some people who we want to promote their behavior, should still probably get paid a, a little bit more than, you know, they'll still Excellent. be some. In other words, like yes. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. And then you just say it's luck, fate, and it's unfortunate you're not getting, you know, you weren't as lucky, but it's not to the degree that we have now. Excellent. That's my right. opinion. I you never know, heard I, your I opinion. I agree with you. No, I agree with you. In other words, like, we are hardwired biologically to respond well to reward and punishment, we, to seek pleasure and avoid pain. And this is incidentally another way of understanding why we don't have a free will. This isn't up to us. And it's because we respond to reward and punishment that our society has to offer certain rewards and punishments to encourage beneficial behavior yeah. and to discourage detrimental behavior. Now, again, it's like the other part of this equation is like we need to reward people for contributing to society. So if a person, let's say, is a math genius or something, has a skill that very, very few people have, we might want to give this person a bit more incentive to utilize the skill by rewarding this person a bit more. But again, this would kind of like um, do this, this. This would kind of like, you know, basically um, just negate the rationale for example, somebody like Donald Trump to be earning, you know, to, to, to be worth $10 billion. That's, well, I don't that's, know if that's, that's correct. Absorbing. Even a billion would be too much. Well, right. All right. So, but, but again, so like, you know, we, we just want to make the point that like understanding that nobody has a free will does not mean that all of a sudden, like, you know, we're not going to be rewarded and punished for, for various things. All right. So, but the economic system should reflect better the lack of free will. And right now it's kind of the opposite. It promotes, you know, like billionaires, you know, in my plan, no, it would be illegal to say to make more than a million dollars a year. And if you're, if you're A-Rod or LeBron, like, say you make $20 million a year, you're going to be taxed $19 million. That goes into the pool for Medicaid for everyone and, you know, for all the social services, the whole safety net. And if you make less than that, it's tax-free. So, you know, the income disparity will not be that great. Nobody will be, nobody will be you know, no one needs more than a million dollars a year. It might all even right, be a lesser right, number. All right, now, Nick, this so is about So there will still be I hear you. This is some about, income inequality, but I not... I want, I it's want gonna the economic to reflect. It's going to be more equal, I know. All right, the, again, this is well, about... I the, could argue if there's no free, we should all make exactly the same. Do you about, agree that we're not, No, we're not arguing that. Okay. This is about the 2006 presidential okay. election. 2016. I, two, thank you, 2016. I'm telling you. Um, what, you know, we both acknowledge, we both understand that the Democrats are far more ahead on understanding this than the Republicans. Yes. So we're not going to focus on the Republicans right now because, again, they, they don't even get that the climate change is happening or they, they refuse to admit it. So what are you going to tell? What are you telling, you know, what are you saying to Hillary Clinton and to Bernie Sanders? What should they be telling the American people about free will and being rich? Hi, I'm Bernie Sanders, and I want to tell you that honesty is the best policy. I'm running for president to be your leader and I want to tell you the truth. I don't want anybody thinking that I'm, you know, BSing. And I don't want to live on a planet where everybody's living under a false premise. 
The premise I would like to discuss with you tonight is that ever since we were little kids, we were told honesty is the best policy. Honesty is cleaner. Honesty is kinder. Honesty is more compassionate. Honesty is gentler. As your leader, I would like to inform you that free will is an illusion. Now that we know this truth, I think I'm going to propose to all of you, like I've been saying before, this income inequality is immoral because without free will, we should all be living more or less the same. Uh, please go to my website and learn all the details of George Ortega and Nick Vale's wonderful show. Episode by episode, they've clearly described why there's no free will. I don't want to lie to myself anymore. I don't want to lie to you anymore. It's terrible with the, everybody lying to each other. The, the court system thinks there's free will. I'm sure therapists think there is, making people feel badly about themselves. It, you can feel depressed, but you should no longer be depressed that you're depressed because it wasn't up to you. Thank you. Okay. And vote for me. Excellent. Now, what would I, I want? I just made that up. How was that? That was I've great. Never rehearsed that, that was excellent. You should run and for. And Hillary thinks the same. You should run for 2020. Okay. So but like, I wasn't born in this country. Oh, but you said it doesn't right. matter anymore. No, we no, I, don't, I didn't say that. <laughs> All right. What would, what would I tell? Yeah, you do an ad. You're what, Hillary now. What would I tell Hillary Clinton? No, no, do an ad. You're no, Hillary. Uh, you get it. All right. Here's so like I'm, I'm Hillary Clinton. Okay. So <laughs> the like. The way I just did. All right. Bernie was talking about truth. Okay. You know, as a presidential nominee, nominee, I'm here to tell you it's not just about truth. It's about defending the rights of a poor population that in the United States comprises about 10 to 15 percent of the population. Rich people like Donald Trump, who's, who's running against me, they will blame the poor for being poor. They blame the poor for being poor because they use this free will deceit, this free will illusion as a justification for this blame. So we need to overcome this free will belief in order to create a much more just, compassionate, humane society. The poor in this country are being denied opportunities or being denied, you know, certain doors are closed to them because certain people are blaming them for being poor. To the extent that we as a country understand that if we're, if we're religious, God controls everything. If we're scientific, the laws of nature, cause and effect control mm -hmm. everything. We don't have a free will. We can create a society that serves not just the rich, but that serves all of us, including the middle class. Okay, so this is good. So, uh, Hillary, so I'm glad you uh, finally mentioned the dirty words. Finally, you know, you didn't go on and on about, like, they're not blame. You know, you said there's no free will. So because you don't believe in free will, you're saying that, you know, we're all basically doing the best we can at the time. And if we're not doing the, you know, if, if, we're, if you think we could have done better, why wouldn't we do better? Uh, after all, if I had free will, I would always, you know, do better. So you're also saying I didn't get to choose my intelligence. If I make bad choices in life, I don't deserve to be poor because after all, I didn't choose, the, I, you're going to, you know, the Republicans are going to say, well, you're poor because you made bad choices. When you were a kid, you stole from 7-Eleven. You went to that juvenile home. You weren't able to get an SAT tutor because you didn't have the money. Because of that, you didn't get into a good school. You went to a community college. Then you didn't have any money. You dropped out and had to work at McDonald's. And all these bad choices compounded, compounded, compounded. And you ended up poor with food stamps, you know, barely being able to. And then you finally got a job at Walmart at $7 an hour, and you're not making it, right? Those choices that you made we're all predetermined and completely determined by your nature and nurture. It's not your fault. Therefore, I need to, I'm going to come in and help you and raise you more or less to the middle class. Excellent. All right, Bernie. Is that what you're saying? Bernie, yes. I agree with everything you're saying, but I want us to, to take more responsibility. But those bad choices you're, weren't your fault because you didn't choose how intelligent you I agree you with right. everything okay. you said. Absolutely. Right. makes you. consummate sense. But Bernie, you and I are running for the most powerful position on the planet, and it is our responsibility to inform the world that nobody has a free will. It's our responsibility to do this, just as it's our responsibility to educate and inform the, the, the planet, the people of the world, about climate change. Because this, this belief in free will actually causes as much problem, uh, problems as does climate change. Actually, I want to get into this, because a lot of people don't understand this. All right, here in the United States, because of the belief in free will, when people tell the public, when people tell you and you and you that you, because of your actions, are causing this climate change in 100 years, may destroy civilization of, as we know it, when scientists tell you this, because you believe you have a free will, you're not able to hear it. In psychology, it's known as going into denial. Your unconscious is unable to accept that you and your family and your friends and your associates could be so irresponsible, so 
Cal is so indifferent to the needs of your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, that you're destroying the planet. This is all because of the free will belief. Now, the alternative to this, like, what if tomorrow everybody got that nobody has a free will? Then, when scientists say to, to us, listen, we are seriously putting our civilization at risk by not addressing climate change, all of a sudden, nobody feels indicted. All of a sudden, nobody is really blaming our, our friends and our family and ourselves for, for being inactive about climate change. And because we're not blaming ourselves, we won't go into denial. Because we don't go into denial, we're able to hear the message. You know, here in the United States, 56% of the population denies that climate change is happening because of this free will belief. So, the, so this isn't just about, you know, economics. Actually, this climate change issue is, is hugely um, related to the economics because to the extent we don't um, address this, for example, the Stern report coming out of England several years ago said that you know our our economy might um, might um, you know um, shrink by 20 or more percent. So this is a hugely important issue. I okay, know. but your theory is directly opposed to the pleasure principle because people find it pleasurable to buy oil, drive in their car, and do things that pollute the planet. So how you know how are you going to override the pleasure principle? by having people stop those things that make, you know, say they don't get free will and they go and they say, I'm a slave to the pleasure principle. I have no choice but to go towards pleasure and away from pain. Therefore, I have no choice but to drive cars, consume this product, you know, pollute the environment the way they do, make money that, you know, how are you going to override the pleasure principle and prove to them it's more pleasurable to, to stop global climate change? Even though we know we don't have free will, I'm going to say I have no choice but to go towards pleasure and away from it. I like driving my car all around. How okay. are you going to over, you know, Bernie? Trump that. Bernie, <laughs> we have to cross that bridge when we get to it. But like we won't. You have be, dueling no free will no, paradigms. We don't. We won't be able to cross that bridge while 56 percent of the American public is denying climate change. So first, let, right, fine, let's get enough. people on board. Let's get let's get them to accept that they don't have a free will to therefore not have to go into denial about climate change and then to address your question more directly. So like, yes, when everybody gets that it's not our fault fundamentally because we don't have a free will, but we are destroying the, the, the futures of our children and, and uh, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, then out of a sense of morality. In other words, like, you know, sure, doing what we want to do gives us pleasure, but satisfying our conscience gives, gives us pleasure so also. So you're going to argue it's more pleasurable to stop global climate change then do the things because we love our children and okay. grandchildren great-grandchildren all right so uh, we both agree that this is a political issue now I don't think part of the guys in your meetup you know think politicians will ever touch this with a 10-foot pole and that's why I don't know where the leaders are, are you other than you and I and cable access say politicians are not the first group of people to lead us to the free will as an illusion what would be the next category of people we could target well certainly yeah we're, we're say the politicians like, just whatever they don't get it nick you and i and our associates are spearheading this this new movement to a new um human consciousness but like basically we have to not just work on convincing the politicians we have to work on convincing the scientists the the biologists the the psychologists the physicists the leaders of a sci our scientific community because just as with climate change when the scientific consensus is that like you know 95 percent and more confidence that climate change is happening and that humans are causing it just with that same level of confidence if the if the scientific community would just assert you know consensus view that nobody has a free will then that would pave the the way for our politicians through a lot more evidence to explain it to the so American when the people. scientists completely all agree that your behavior is completely determined by nature and nurture and the politicians still don't listen to them. Well, the Republicans don't listen to scientists anyway. You know, they got the whole Bible thing, faith. So the Democrats might get it, but say they don't. Who would be your next, I mean, philosophy professors? They're not powerful um, enough anyway. Again, all right. The, I, I think it might have to be judges or lawyers. Well, you got to understand, a, a lot of movements are grassroots root, root, movements that start from the bottom up. In other words, That's like... That's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, to the extent that, like, we're blaming 
uh, obese and overweight people for being obese because of their free will and we're discriminating against them and all. This is a human rights issue. This is a social rights issue. So like the progressives, the, you know, the, the people who fight for human rights, they I think would be another kind of like, you know, some of our allies in this. All I want is the aha moment, okay? I want people watching this show, because if you're watching this show, you probably were surfing, channel surfing, and saw those little rectangles on Time Warner cable box and saw free will question mark live exclamation point. So then 99.9% .9 of people just don't even pay, you know, they just go to the next show or watch a Yankee game or whatever. If you stopped and landed on this show, you're basically halfway there, right? Right. Now, what Nick is referring to, I just want to explain. This show is being presented first in White Plains, then we represent it to an audience of about, you know, a, a potential audience of about 500,000 people and perhaps more with, with uh, Verizon in Manhattan. Time Warner. In, through Time Warner. Verizon so Files this, don't have this the show channel gets surf. out to the, to the entire uh, Manhattan community. Twice a week. Time Warner is the only one I think to Twice list month, the name right. of the show on the rectangle, you know, the rectangles on the. Kids. Give them more information about the Manhattan All right, show. All right. So when you have the aha moment, we want you to tell your friends and family and and anyone in the media to keep watching our show. And I personally will not rest, will not leave this planet in peace, knowing I, I need to hear: Do you believe in free will as a question in a in a debate, a primary debate, probably well, presidential debate, even better. But let's start. And that's all I want. Then as soon as I hear that, I'll be in the hospital and I'll die in peace. Right. I don't know what you want. And I don't care what, what you want. What I want, I what want, I want is mumbo what, jumbo with when, long, this long when, when, when this question is asked, what I want is for Hillary and Bernie and Donald and all say, of course I don't believe in free will. It's going to be four years. I, we're not going to get it this time. Whatever, whatever. It's I mean, going to be different candidates. Yeah. You, 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 you no, got to be hopeful. Say, I just want the question right. out there. Fine, but, but then it's not. You're getting older. You're not going to. I want more. I want them to like, I want them to explain to the American people, listen, we don't have a free will because as our science has All demonstrated right, the Republicans, for decades, I know your age. You're never our gonna behavior hear that. is a result of nature and nurture. <laughs> because this law of cause and effect governs everything, right. we don't have a free I don't want to give your age up, but you're not going to hear that. In your, the deal? You're not going to hear that in your lifetime at the Republican debate. No, I, I disagree. You know never why? in a million years. In, like years. in order to successfully address climate change, we actually may need uh, the Democratic debate. I think we're no, five no. years away. But let me tell you something. The Republican Party is preventing our acting on climate change. And if climate change denial is a great part of our not acting on climate change, we have to get this free will question right. So it might happen within five, ten years because it's so urgent not just like to to write you know rich and poor i don't care if they the get it right i want the, the moderator the to say we have a question from nick vale from new york on facebook and youtube about, do you believe in free will that's it and the you're answer confusing is, of everything course not it doesn't matter what the are <laughs> just get the ball rolling thanks for watching thanks for watching we'll be back again next time on exploring illusion free will most important show ever of all time is right here all right there you go <laughs>